Almond Brothers Day. Ranking of the albums. Almond Brothers Band, December 7th, 1972. That's the day I was born. That's exactly 50 years ago today. This was another tough one. This is one of my favorite bands. Uh, Almond Brothers are just a, a legendary band out of out of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, founded by really by Dwayne Allman. Um, Dwayne Allman starts the band in '69. Finds Dickie Betts. Finds Barry Oakley. Finds uh, Jamoy for a drumming slot along with Butch Trucks on drums and calls his brother back from California who he had been in bands with throughout the mid 60s. Uh, Greg finally goes out to California. You know, he's hooking up with some of those guys in the Laurel Canyon, Echo Park area, you know, Jackson Brown and people like this. And he finally calls brother Greg back, says, I got the band. We're going to, we're going to put this band together. We're going to call it the Almond Brothers Band. And and Greg brings songs with them. Um, ultimately, Dwayne dies in a motor, motorcycle accident in 1971 at the age of 24. The band carries on. They break up a few times. They reinvent themselves. Really in the same vein as the original band, a couple of times with, with different guys and become an American treasure, you know, uh, from, 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 from getting as low as you can get as a rock band to, to, to reestablishing yourself multiple night runs in large venues. We're going to rank this discography again. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to do this. There's, there's not a bad album here. You're, you're going to see other ranking of the videos. Uh, shows on YouTube where they really trash some of these albums that are on the lower run. There's not a bad album here. Um, so we're going to start off with my least favorite Almond Brothers album to my favorite Almond Brothers album. I'm, I'm going to critique some songs. Um, again, I, I I don't have a right to to critique these, uh, but I do enjoy this process and, and listening to this music for the last two weeks and re-listening over and over. I, I've seen the Allman Brothers probably 15 times live. Every time with Dickie Betts in the band. I did see them one time without Dickie Betts. That's with um, with with Warren Haynes and, and, and Derek Trucks on guitar. Um, my least favorite Allman Brothers album is their 1981 album Brothers of the Road. This album comes out in August of 81. You know, it's, uh, we, we've now gotten to the point where the two main drummers, you just have Butch Trucks, you have David Toller, uh, Toller uh, on drums, filling out that spot with, with Butch. Uh, David Goldflies on bass. Of course, you still have the, you know, Greg and Dickey, on uh, guitar and, and keys and singing. Dickie Betts writes most of this album, okay? I mean, Greg is in a spot here where he, he's only contributed a couple songs on the on the record. Uh, Betts, Betts is doing a lot of the dirty work here. Um, you know, the band's trying to find their way. Um, you know, they've, they've gone through the 70s. Lots of bands from the seventies have a hard time making their way into the eighties. So brothers of the road is a perfect example of that. You know, you, you have a, a transition in music from the seventies to the eighties and lots of rock bands were not able to do that. Led Zeppelin didn't even bother trying after Ch John Bonham dies. The who does a couple albums in the eighties before they call it quits. Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Yes. Has issues. Uh, Almond Brothers too. I mean, trying to sound like the Doobie Brothers. The Doobie Brothers have made the transition, you know, a little bit in uh, in the late '70s. I, I feel like the Almond Brothers are trying to hit that stride here. You know, Brothers of the Road is a song that opens up the the album. Uh, it's it's a it's a 
It's a Dickie Betts pen song. You know, it's a it's a three star out of five star song. It, it's it's one of the best songs on the album. Um, you know, uh, leaving is the second song. It's 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 it's. it's it, it's a, it's a it's a Greg Allman song and it's very rough. It's what's one of the weaker songs in the entire catalog. Straight from the heart. Straight from the heart's the third song on the record. It's a again a Dickie Betts pen tune that Greg sings. This song actually enters the top forty. It's their third top forty song in their discography. It's the last time that they enter the top forty. And it's for me, it's one of the weaker tracks in the song. They're they're really going for a hit here. It's like we need we need something on the radio. We need a hit. It sounds tired. They're going for that more synthy keyboard sound, and they're just mailing it in. There, there's no semblance of the original blues rock band that everybody fell in love with. Uh, the heat is on. Another Dicky Bet song. It's it's. It's okay. It's a three. It's a three out of five star song. I'm straight for the heart. By the way, it's a two, a two out of five. It's 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 not good. The judgment leads off side two of the record. It's okay, but we're we're, we're trying to sound like the Charlie Daniels band. You know, Dickie Betts kind of invented boogie country music in 1972 when he did you know, uh, Blue Sky and, and some of these songs off of the Eat a Peach record. You know, Charlie Daniels kind of perfected that sound throughout the 70s. And by 79, Charlie Daniels is doing things like Devil Went Down to Georgia. And, 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 and he's a sensation. You know, on the judgment, Dickie Betts tries to then copy off of Charlie Daniels. And it doesn't really work out. It's actually not that bad of a song. Uh, two... Two rights, two rights don't make a wrong, or fix a wrong. You know, it's an okay song. It's a three out of th a three out of five. Uh, never, ho never know how much I needed you. Um, it's probably the best song in this record. It's it, it's a Greg Allman song. It's the third song on side two. There's some saxophone again. You're kind of getting into some uptown country rock blues. I'm trying to find the city. You know, the city lights of blues and it kind of works a little bit here. I think it's the best song called Never, Never Knew How Much I, you know, I, I Needed You. Uh, I recommend that song if, you, if on this record. Um, things You Used to Do, you know. Great line. She's got a million dollar smile and a half dollar soul. <laughs> okay. Not a bad song. Um... It's, it's kind of tired though. It's 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 worn out. Um, you can you can tell that they're they're slipping. Uh, I beg of you is the last song. You know, again, this album. Um, it's not as bad as everybody wants to say this album is. You throw this on at a party or in, or, or, or having some beers during the day, you know. You might not even turn it off. It, it's not that bad, but it's the worst record in this collection. Uh, the album that preceded that is Reach for the Sky, okay? This is their seventh record. It comes out in August of 80. You still have Jamoy on drums and Butch Trucks and Dickie Betts. Uh, by this point, you know, uh, you know, you're, 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 with, you're without uh, Chuck Lavelle. Uh, Lamar Williams is left. Uh, Hell and High Water is the opening track, and it's it's not bad. It's a th it's a three and a half. It's a three star song on this album out of five. Uh, Mis Mystery Woman is the next track. Um, this is an Almond Greg Almond Dan Toller. So Dan Toller's taken over uh, the second guitar spot with Dickie Betts still in the band. Obviously, Mystery Woman's weak. It's you know it's an attempt at a hit. Um, and you can just you can just tell they're, they're they're going for some sort of you know she's the mystery woman really I mean it's your seventh album you know this is it sounds like a, a a novice songwriter trying to write their first song the third song is absolutely killer um, from the madness of the West it's an instrumental track I mean Dickie Betts on almost every album we're going to talk about has written. An instrumental piece. I think this is a great song. 
um, you know, relatively great considering what we're dealing with here at Reach for the Sky. It's it's probably a three and a half or four song, a star song. Um, the next song is also a, a Dickie Betts song. Uh, I got a right to be wrong. You know, it's a good song. It's a three star song. Uh, the second song starts off with another song where they're going for the hit Angeline. Angeline's fun. <laughs> you know, again, this is an album um, that you, you throw on at a party and have some have some cocktails and have some fun. This is the Allman Brothers Band. There's really not a bad album here. Um, it's 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 not a bad track. Three and a half out of five. Uh, Famous Last Words. Two and a half out of five. Another Dickie Bet song. Next song, Keep uh, On. Keep It On. A two and a half star song. Uh, by the way, this album is uh, produced by Mike Lauer and Jim and Johnny Cobb. Um, again, they're kind of going for that Charlie Daniels thing. Charlie Daniels is a sensation in the in the country boogie world, you know. You know again, coming out in 1980, you know, Kenny Rogers is huge. Dolly Parton's huge. Willie Nelson's huge. Charlie Daniels is huge. Dickie Betts is basically a country star at, at this point. And, and, and maybe he's arguably invented this genre. And he's going back and, and, and trying to figure out how this band can be big again. Um, I mean, he saves this album. Greg is Greg is having issues with Delata and and vodka and and all kinds of things here. And, and if it wasn't for Dicky Betts putting on that cape with a big D on the back, saying, "Hey, I'm gonna, brother, I'm going to bring you home," I'm not sure you'd have much more than that. Um, you know, uh, the last song is called "So Long," and you know, quite frankly so long for this album it's a lame song it's a very very weak track and that that's coming in at number number uh you know my, my, my second least favorite Allman Brothers song the next album in line is Win Lose or Draw this is the fifth record this is the album after Brothers and Sisters a lot of things happen in between Brothers and Sisters which has Jessica on it which has Ramblin' Man on it um, you know, Dickie and Greg re released solo albums, um, Laid Back and, 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 and Highway Call. And those are successful. They tour at, at the same time. When they reconvene in the studio, you know, with Lamar Williams on bass, because Barry Oakley's died in 72, and with Chuck Level on keyboards, they're, they're coming off of a big, huge album. And this is this is this is an okay record. Um, the opening track uh, "Can't Lose What You Never Had" is a Muddy Waters song. You know, it's a good. It's there's some great stuff by Dicky Betts on this record. He's he's jamming. Uh, it's a nice song. The next song is very country, just another love song. And you, know, you kind of think about Marshall Tucker here. It's it's very country. And again, Dicky's already had a hit with Ramblin' Man. Dickie's Highway Call album that he came out with the year before um, it was fairly successful, and he's going for that thing too. Um, Nevertheless, is the third song. It's a weak song. It's a Dickie, excuse me. It's a Greg song. Greg sounds rough on this record. There's rumors that that Greg Allman was was sick during this tour. Greg has heroin creeping in big time here. Greg a couple months before this album was released in August of 75, had just married Cher. You know, you go to the grocery store and you look at the National Enquirer and you see Greg Allman with Cher on the cover and People Magazine and tabloids and heroin. And, you know, going to the studio and having to put something out while you're sick. Nevertheless, sounds like Greg's sick and Greg is sick. Win, lose, or draw, you know. This whole album can be summed up. It's called Win, Loser, Draw. There's some winners, there's some losers, and there's some draws. It's a, but that uh, you turn the album over and you have High Falls. It's a Dickie Best instrumental that is absolutely killer. I remember a couple years ago, and I consider myself a, an Allman Brothers connoisseur. And I've seen the Allman Brothers, like I said, starting in 1991. 
you know, through 2013 or 14 times. And I heard this song, High Falls. I'm like, that sounds like the Allman Brothers. And it was. High Falls is one of the best Allman Brothers songs ever written. Uh, it's an instrumental. It's just sublime. I highly recommend listening to High Falls off this record. It's the highlight of this album. I don't know if it's a five. I mean, if, if Jessica is a five-star classic, I'm going to call this a four-and-a-half-star classic just because it can't be a five-star uh, the album finishes up with a Billy Joe Shaver cover called Sweet Mama. It's okay. Uh, again, uh, uh, Johnny Sadlin. Uh, Sandlin has produced this record. So T Tom Dowd has produced albums up to this point. Tom Dowd's no longer involved. Again, not a, not a bad album, just not their best. Enlightened Rogues is the next record. Uh Dwayne Allman used to say that uh, the world was made up of religious fools and enlightened rogues. Well, this is their sixth record. Came out in February of 79. So the album we just dealt with, Win, Lose, or Draw, was the album that preceded it. So we have a, you know, a three and a half gap, year gap between this album. The band had broken up. You know, The Marriage of Cher, one of their managers, or tour managers, Scooter Herring, went to jail for years on the testimony of, of Greg Allman, basically ratting him out. The federal government's on Greg's ass, and, 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 and they're going to throw him in jail. And he says, yeah, Scooter did this with the cocaine and all that. Uh, the band said they will never play with him again. He's a rat. We'll never play with a guy like that. Well, money's running thin. Capricorn Records' is money's running thin. They decide to get back together. Dickie reaches out to Greg. They put out a nice record here. Uh, this came, again, seven, uh, February of 79. Um, Tom Dowd uh, gets back involved uh, on, on, the, on the production. Um, uh, Dan Toller replaces basically the Chuck Level spot, but he on guitar. So so Dan Toller from Dickie's solo band is, is the new guitar player. David Goldflies replaces Lamar Williams on bass. So, you know, the first song Crazy Love became a, a bit of a hit. You know, Bonnie Bramlett singing back up on Crazy Love. I mean, it's a good song. Um, very solid song. The second song um, is written by Don Johnson. Yes, Don Johnson from Miami Vice along with Dickie Betts. It's called Can't Take It With You. You know, it's a solid damn song with Greg singing. So Dickie's writing songs for Greg to sing. That's not always the case with the Allman Brothers, but Dickie is the prolific writer in this band. And I want this video to be very abundantly clear that Dickie Betts is the main songwriter of the Allman Brothers. You know, Greg sings Melissa. Greg sings all these big songs, but Dickie is the main writer of the of the. I don't want to call it filler of, the, of these albums, but a lot of it. It's a really good song. Can't take it with you. The third song, Pegasus, is another instrumental in the legacy of this band. You know, from, from Elizabeth Reed on the second record to, to you know, instrumental illness. Uh, I mean, it's a, Pegasus is killer. It's not quite as good as High Falls off the previous album, but it's damn good. Highly recommend. Four and a half stars on Pegasus. Third song and final song on the first album, um, you know, is called Need to Love You So Bad. It's, again, sounding tired. Sounds like a redo of Cross the Bear, you know, from the, from the first album. Side two flips over with a 3.25 out of five song, a B.B. King song called Blind Love. I like that song. That's a solid song. Again, a three and a half song. Try it one more time. This is a Betts Goldflies song. Again, David Goldflies is the bass player at this point. It's damn good. Uh, just Ain't Easy. Okay. Uh, it's a nice song. It's a cover song. Um, it's a three and a half song. Sail Away is is another Betts Pen song. It's it's a little bit weaker here, but uh you know, again, the song Try It One More Time, the the Betts Goldfly song says do it's a duet between Dickie 
and Greg, which you don't get a lot of duets in this band. In fact, I'm feeling like there's one other one, but you know, let's try to do it one more time. You know, Dickie and Greg are singing that together. Now they're back together after three and a half years. Let's try and do it one more time. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling that energy and and it feels real to me. Uh, again, this is a damn good record. All these records are good. We're, we're gonna now get into where it gets more difficult to to uh, to rank these. Hitting the Note is their final, their final studio album. This album comes out in March of 03. It's a 75 minute record. All these other records, we're talking about 38 to 45 minute records. You know, this is 75 minutes. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm not sure that it needs to be that long. We open up with, with Firing Line. Good song, good good five minute song, a three star song. Uh, the next song is High Cost of Low Living. It's a, it's a three and a half star song. Again, this is a, th th these songs are now, Dickie's out of the band. Dickie's been kicked out of this group, which is for me sacrilegious, but Dickie Betts and, and Greg have been kind of bickering the whole time since Dwayne's died. You know, since Dwayne's died, primarily Greg's had some sort of drug or alcohol problem. In the in the later 90s, Greg cleans up and, and Dickie doesn't clean up. And I think Greg cleaning up, he finally had the courage. And he had Warren Haynes and Derek Trucks and said, you know what, Dickie? We're done with you. We're going to do our own thing. We don't need your drama and your bull crap, even though you've written half, a lot of the great songs of this band, more than half. Um, the great Derek Truck solo in, in the second song, High Cost for Low Living. Uh, the third song is a nine minute song, Desdemona. Do I have a problem with it being nine minutes? When you we sing three up to the three minute mark, you've pretty much done your song. You have a four minute guitar solo, you know, and then another couple of minutes of of, of a coda. I mean, it, it's a great song. I'm gonna give it a four four stars. I do have a problem with it being so damn long. Um, it's hard to listen to a, an album for 75 minutes. We don't have time. We want to go to work. We want to listen to a record. We want to be able to get through a record and, and be able to tangibly understand it. 75 minutes is too long for me. Woman Across the River. It's a cover song. Uh, Warren Haynes takes lead vocals here. Um, again, Warren Haynes, we haven't talked about yet. He's he's come from the Dickie Betts solo bands of the 80s and, and starts with the Allman Brothers in 89. Here he is the senior member of the guitar onslaught with, with uh, and, and taking Derek Truck kind of under his wing. Uh, the fifth song is Old Before My Time. It's a touching kind of ballad. This is an Allman Haynes song again. So, you know, Firing Line, Low Cost of High Living, Desdemona, Old Before My Time, are all Haynes Almond songs. Um, Who to Believe In, eh, not the best song. Also co-written with Warren Haynes and John J Jawars Jaworski. Uh, I, I just butchered that name, but I'm not sure anybody's gonna know. So Jaworski or Wits or something like this. Um, Maydell, the next song, uh, Johnny uh, Neal song with, with, with Warren Haynes writing. Uh, good song, you know. Not my favorite. Again, we're a couple songs too long in this album. Could this song have been eliminated along with Who to Believe? Probably. The eighth track is a, a song that was also off of the first Government Mule album, which was an, uh, Government Mule is a band with Warren Haynes and Alan Woody, who was the bass player. Um in the Almond Brothers in the, in the 90s. This is, uh, Rockin' Horse is just a rockin' song. It, it's amazing. It's probably the best song in this album. In fact, I'm giving it a five star. Uh, this song is written by Greg Allman, Warren Haynes, Jack Pearson, who was never on a studio album with the Almond Brothers, but was in the Almond Brothers for a couple years after Warren Haynes left in 97. So he was in the band for two years, 97, 98, before Derek Trucks came aboard. Um, and Alan Woody, the bass player. Rockin' Horse is amazing. Again, it's on the first Government Mule album. It's better here. 
Warren Haynes and um, and, um, and 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 Derek Trucks crush this. Um, instrumental illness is at Otil Burbridge. Otil Burbridge takes over for Alan Woody. This is the only studio album that Otil, who's now in Dead and Company, okay, uh, is the bass player on. He's fantastic. They wrote the song. The, the last song finished up with Old Friend. It's a Warren Haynes, Derek Truck song. It's the only Allman Brothers song in the discography that does not have an original member on it just because it's two guitar players. My next album is Seven Turns. This is their comeback album, okay? So after 81's Brothers on the Road, they come back in 90. Nine years later with a studio album called Seven Turns. Uh, this came out in July of 90. It's their ninth record. This thing is great. Um, good, clean, fun. Almond, Almond Betts and Johnny Neal again wrote that. It's a four song, a four star classic. Uh, Let Me Ride is a, a very solid Dickie Betts pen song. Four stars. Low, uh, Low Down Dirty Mean is another Betts Neal. Three and a half. Shine It On. Greg sings that. It's rock solid. Reminds me of Voodoo Child by Hendrix. Um, just love that. Another Betts Haynes. Loaded Dice, Warren sings that. It's another Betts Haynes killer. Seven Turns. It's a Dickie Betts written song. It's the title track. It's it's freaking great, you know. Dickie has a way again. Putting that cape on with the big D on the back for Dickie, and he freaking saves the day again. Gambler's Roll, a Haynes Neal song. Um, Johnny Neal again. It's a good song. Uh, True Gravity. There's your your instrumental. It was nominated for a Grammy. True Gravity's great. It's a four and a half star, just like Pegasus, just like High Falls. Killer. And again, this is the first album with Warren Haynes, Alan Woody on bass. It ain't over yet. Tom Dowd's back in the producer chair. Killer, killer album. The next album that comes out, and my next on my list, is Shades of Two World. This comes out in August of, of 91. I saw the Allman Brothers for the first time in August of 91. Um, end, of the end of the Line. Great four-star classic. Uh, Alan Woody, Allman, and Haynes. Uh, Bad Rain. Man, jamming. An 11-minute jam with a Betts Haynes song. Killer. Four stars. Nobody knows. Third song on the album, five-star classic. Dickie Betts penned. Greg sings. Again, Dickie's giving Greg a song to sing. You know why? Probably because Dickie knows that Greg is the voice of the Allman Brothers. He writes a song like nobody knows. I, I, I challenge you to go out and listen to that song again. It's the best song for me that the Allman Brothers had done since Brothers and Sisters. It's killer. It's killer with no filler. It's so good. The next song, uh, Get On With My Life, is an Allman song uh, written by Greg. Uh, it's good. Three and a half stars. Midnight Man. Um... Uh, is a Betts Haynes song. It's, it's okay. It's weaker. Kind of bird. Epic. Again, we're talking about the instrumental. Pegasus, High Falls, um, True Gravity, you know, in that line of Dickie Betts penned instrumentals. Every album that they did had one of these, except for, I think, uh, Brothers on the Road. Um, and then they finish up with, so Kind of Bird, Again, is nominated for a Grammy. They don't win. I, I believe that uh, um, Eric Johnson wins for Cliffs of Dover. Come Out of My Kitchen. Come Out of My Kitchen by Robert Johnson finishes it off. Um, you know, this is another Tom Dowd produced album, and it's very good. Now we're getting into the, we're into the top five. My fifth favorite, and what I think is the best Allman Brothers is where it all begins, May of 94. This is their 11th album, All Night Train, four out of five classic. Sail Across the Devil Sea, four out of five classic. Back Where It All Begins, five out of star, five star classic. Again, with nobody knows from the album previous, the jamming on, on Back Where It All Begins, you get, out, get out on the highway, and let it roll on, roll on back to some place you ain't never been. I mean, I got goosebumps even talking about it. I want to go get in my car and, and, and click it up to 69 miles per hour and 
and just rock it out. Uh, Soul Shine, Warren Haynes Pen Classic. By the way, back where it all begins, Dickie Betts written song, right? Nobody else helps him, Dickie Betts. Soul Shine, Warren Haynes. Uh, nobody left to run with anymore. God, what a song. I, I feel that now. Again, this is my 50th birthday. Today is my 50th. Do I got anybody left to run with anymore? Put in the comments if you got, <laughs> if you'll run with me. Again, this is Ryan Nolting, my channel. Click subscribe, click like, enjoy this. Um, change My Way of Living, another Dickie Betts song, killer. I gotta change my way of living. And, and you're getting a lot of this in, in, these, in this band. These guys partied hard. There's guys that acted like they partied. Some of the partying that they did wasn't the type of partying that you even laugh about. This was hardcore shit. And, 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 and I'm not trying to joke about alcoholism or drug addiction because it's serious. But <sighs> Mean Woman Blues, not as good. But okay, uh, everybody's got a mountain to climb. Again, a little bit. A little bit of filler here. Uh, what's done is done. Oh my God, I'm having way too much fun. I'm running from the man with a gun. Wah, wah, it's so good. And uh, Temptation is a gun. I mean, Tom Dowd. Uh, what's done is done is, a, is, a, is an Almond Alan Woody song. Again, Alan Woody is the bass player at this point. And some days this is my favorite. I'll, I'll go to this record as much as anything because I, I lived this record. I... I saw all the elements many times here. Top four, Idol Winds South, my fourth favorite. This is their second record. It comes out in September of, of 70. Whew, man, Tom Dowd again. Um, this album is uh, starts off with revival. People, can you feel it? Love is everywhere. Uh, four and a half out of five. Uh, don't keep me wondering. Five out of five. Classic written by Greg. Midnight Rider, five out of five classic, uh, written by Greg and Kim Payne. In the memory of Elizabeth Reed. A Dickie Betts pen, five out of five classic. So in the lineage uh, of, of these instrumentals we talked about, High Falls, Pegasus, you know, um, Elizabeth Reed is, is the poster child for that, Jessica. And memory of Elizabeth Reed. They used to hang out in graveyards back in Macon, Georgia, where they're, you know, they're from Jacksonville, but they really formed in Macon. And where they would take their girlfriends on a date, because they could get privacy, if you know what I mean, is the graveyard. And Dickie came across a gravestone that said, in the memory of Elizabeth Reed. Pretty romantic to have a date in the graveyard, right? Second song, uh, the original bass player is Barry Oakley. He sings Hoochie Coochie Man. It's a Willie, a Willie Dixon song. It's a weaker point on this record, but it's damn good. And we're talking about pinnacle Allman Brothers here. So a threes, I'm comparing the three star to this album. Uh, Please Call Home, a three and a half star. It's more of a nice touching blues song more than a rocker. Uh, it's a Greg song, another Greg written song. So Greg's written, Don't Keep Me Wondering, Midnight Rider, Please Call Home, and the last song, Leave My Blues at Home. This is a killer album. This is their second record. My third favorite record is Brothers and Sisters. Okay. Dwayne's been dead now. This is the first album that, that Dwayne's not on at all. Chuck Level is now on... Um, um, uh, keyboards replacing the guitar of, of, of Dwayne. Uh, they didn't add a second guitar player yet. Um, Barry Oakley dies during the recording of this. He dies on 11-11, November 11th of 72. Uh, Wasted Words opens it up. Four out of five star classic. Ramblin' Man, country rock, right? Ramblin' Man sounds nothing like anything else in their catalog. Uh, those two songs have Barry Oakley. The rest of the songs have Lamar Williams on bass. Come and Glow Blues is one of my favorite Allman Brothers songs. Come and go. Woman, you got those come and go blues. Bow, nah, nah, nah. Lamar Williams makes his, uh, and I'm giving that a four, four out of five here. On a, some days it's a five out of five for me. 
Jelly Jelly, a Billy Eckstein song. Miles Davis played with Billy Eckstein. It's one of his first bands he played with. Billy Eckstein wrote uh, uh, Jelly Jelly. Kind of reminds me of Stormy Monday, okay? Which they never recorded on a studio album, but Jelly Jelly reminds me of Stormy Monday. I wonder if Billy Eckstein wrote Stormy Monday. I don't know. It's a weaker spot here. Southbound. Southbound Mama opens up side two. Four out of five. Jessica with Les Dudick helping Dickie out on, on guitar, right? So as much as there's not a second guitar player on this album, on their best song, Jessica, on this album, there is a second guitar player. Uh, Pony Boy finishes out. That's another Dickie Betts song. Again, Dickie Betts wrote Ramblin' Man, Southbound, Jessica, and Pony Boy in this record. This is amazing, but it's not as amazing as my second favorite Allman Brothers song, al excuse me, album, which is Eat a Peach. So, Dwayne... Allman dies during the making of this album. I want to say he dies on October 29th of 71. He, he, he gets in a motorcycle accident, okay? Eerily close to where Barry Oakley almost a year later, just slightly over a year later, dies. A, hundred, a thousand yards apart on, on parallel streets in Macon, Georgia. This comes out in February of seventy two. I ain't wasting any. I ain't wasting time no more. He open up after after Dwayne's dead. We ain't wasting time no more. Time goes by like a hurricane, running after a subway train. Whew, man, four and a half stars. Uh, Les Beers and a minor it's instrumental. Uh, four stars. Melissa, a song that Greg had written back in sixty eight, and Dwayne loved it. And Dwayne said we should do that. Well, they do it after Dwayne's dead. Mountain Jam, which is taken from a live recording, probably from the Fillmore. It's like 30 minutes. It finishes out the album. Killer. Based off of a Donovan song. First there is a mountain. Then there is no mountain. Then there is. Um, One Way Out. Another A cover song here. Uh, but just freaking killer. I can't think of who, who uh, did that cover originally, but it's... They make it their own. It's absolutely amazing. Trouble No More, live also from the Fillmore. Just amazing. Stand Back. And then we got Blue Sky, right? On the second side, finishing up the second side, we have Blue Sky, which Dwayne does play on that, by the way. He does take the guitar solo. I mean, the, the guitar solos in Blue Sky. Blue Sky is probably my favorite Allman Brothers song. It's just, it's just so pretty. And, you know, all your chips are down and you know again you get out on the highway and you throw on a cd or a tape or whatever and you listen to blue sky and all your all your cares he wrote it for his girlfriend uh whose last name was blue sky and then it finishes up with little martha little martha is an instrumental it's the only song in this whole discography that Dwayne wrote you know Dwayne doesn't get writing credits on any of this stuff but you know that he had to have been he makes these songs. I mean, the guitar solos, that, especially on the next record that we're going to talk about. Um, you know, it's just it's just amazing. Uh, th this uh, this is just so good. This album was recorded between September and December of seventy one. Again, Dwayne's on this record. He's on a lot of it, but some of it he's not. Um, Ah, Fillmore East of July of 71 is where some of this comes from. It makes me sad that Dwayne's dead. And I... My favorite Allman Brothers album is their first record, okay? This is uh, the Allman Brothers band uh, from November of, of 69. The first song is a Spencer Davis pen tune. It's kind of an intro to, Ain't, to It's Not My Cross the Bear. It's called Don't Want You No More, okay? It leads in. It's like a two-and-a-half-minute song that leads into a five-star classic, It Ain't My Cross the Bear. And when I think of Greg, who's like 21 when this record comes out, and that he probably wrote it when he was 19, how do you write it? It's not my cross to bear when you're 19. I mean, I don't, I don't even understand it. The next song is "Black Hearted Woman." Okay, not, not as good of a song. Ain't my cross to bear is five out of five. "Black Hearted Woman's a four. "Trouble No More" is a Muddy Waters cover to finish out side, side one. Again, Dwayne's 
fully entrenched. She's the leader of this band. When they play live in between songs, Dwayne is talking to the crowd. Dwayne doesn't sing any songs, but yet in between songs, he's talking to the crowd. He's acknowledging things. He's the leader of the band completely. And that, you know, part of the, pro the problems that Dickie and Greg end up having is they don't have a leader after, after Dwayne dies. Moving on, the second side opens up with, with Every Hungry Woman, another Greg song, fully written by Greg, then Dreams. Right? I got a hunger for dreams that I'm never going to see, right? Because that's a normal song to write when you're 19. You know, talking about your life, you know, just one more, more morning I wake up with the blues, you know, and climb up to the hilltop, you know. It's as good as, it's as good as blues gets, as good as blue-eyed soul gets, as good as blue-eyed blues gets, as good as uh, somebody can sing at 20. Dreams into whipping post. You know, dreams into whipping post. So that's my favorite record by them. It's the first record. Again, I have no business at all ranking these records. I do it because I love it. I do it because I want to um, talk about music, talk about the Allman Brothers. You know, I don't have a, you know, for me, once Dickie got kicked out of the band, I was checked out. I don't know how you kick Dickie Betts out of a band. You know, it's like kicking... Superman out of a Marvel movie that has all the Marvel characters. I don't even know if he's Marvel, whatever. You just can't do it. It's like taking Jaws out of the movie, you know, and putting a, you know, dolphin in or something. I I just... Dwayne Allman, when, when you go back and watch the footage of the Fillmore and you listen to Fillmore East, by the way, we didn't talk about Live at the Fillmore East, which comes out after the second album. In 71, I mean, just listen to that album. That's not part of my rankings. I'll probably go back and do a live album's ranking. Um, but Dwayne does die in 71, and this band continues on until about 2015. Um, Dickie gets kicked out in 2000. I saw his second to last show um, with Derek Trucks on guitar also. It was Derek Trucks and, and Dickie Betts. Um, you can't kick that guy out no matter how what kind of problems you got with him because he was the, for me, he's the heart and soul. He doesn't have that gifted voice. He's a very average voice. But he wrote those songs. And when Greg didn't have any songs to sing, Dickie wrote them for him and gave him a great song. You know. Anyway, that's my ranking. We have more rankings coming up. Before the end of the year, we're, we're going to introduce a couple other shows. Um, sign up to my channel. Uh, uh, Ryan Nolting out on this ranking. Enjoy. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my birthday. F big 5-0 today, huh? Have fun. See ya.